Key signatures are important. They tell you what the key of the music is in and gets you in that frame of mind to make reading the music easier since it eliminates accidentals. They follow very specific rules like sharps and flats are in a specific order and they never mix sharps and flats in the same key. Since these are rigid rules, key signatures end up being extremely useful, except everything I just said is not the full truth and there are situations that break the system. So let's talk about the problem with key signatures. Semi clickbait title aside, since the problem here isn't as bad as time signatures, there are still issues that can arise when it comes to key signatures. For instance, if I see a key signature with two flats, based on our rigid rules, I know that the key is either B flat major or G minor. But what if the music is in a mode? Looking at the Fantasia on a theme by Thomas Tallis by Vaughn Williams, the key signature is two flats, and by looking at the melody, you'd guess G minor but all the A's in the melody are flat as well. So this makes for three flats total, wouldn't it? Well, when it comes to writing out modes, composers or copyists will typically stick to whether or not a mode is major or minor and write the key based on that. So Dorian, Phrygian, and Locrian would be written in a minor key and then just use accidentals in the music for the altered pitches. For the Fantasia example I've already mentioned, it's written in G minor, but since the melody is in Phrygian, the A's are all just marked flat instead. For the remaining two modes, Lydian and Mixolydian, the key signature would just be major and then the accidental would be added within the piece. And generally speaking, this does work, which is why I say it's not a big problem, but we do have this minor issue where we have this thought that the key signature tells us the key, which is not always the case. To help explain this issue, let's take a look at this melody. What key is it in? And I promise there are no chromatic notes or altered tones. Everything falls in the key. This particular melody is a real world melody. It was originally a half step higher and in 7-8 time, but I altered it for this video to make it easier to explain my point. This particular key seems to mix sharps and flats though. And if we put it in a key signature, that just looks weird. And is it sharps first or flats? But wait, don't we have a rule that we can't mix sharps and flats? Well, that is a rule that generally works for major and minor with two exceptions, G and D harmonic minors where the seventh is raised and it happens to be sharp in a key of flats. But the sharps wouldn't be in the key signature. But that's not the case here. We have two sharps and two flats. So what key could this possibly be? It seems I could put either two sharps or two flats there, but which one is right? Well, after figuring out that G is our tonic, the answer going off of our rule for modes would be the two flats. But there's also another way of composition and that's just not using a key signature at all. And it's melodies like this that are the reason why. There's also that common comment about why do we have double sharps or why is E sharp a thing? Why not just put F natural? Well, the easy explanation is music theory, but that's a boring answer. So let's put the melody I just showed in its original context. It looks like this. Now, what key is this in? Most would analyze this as chromatic, or maybe do what I did and check to see if it was octatonic. Well, we have D sharp and D natural, as well as B natural and B flat. So there's no way this is a heptatonic scale. Well, when in fact it actually is. Had it been written this way, with a C double sharp and an A sharp, you can easily see that it is in fact the heptatonic scale and from here we know what our alterations to the pitches are to look it up and find out that this is a Hungarian minor scale. But I know that's an uncommon scale, so what about something in standard performed repertoire? Well, let's look at these three notes in a piece by Tchaikovsky. What part of the chord do you think the B flat is? I promise there's an easy and logical way to know, but because this was written in a way that was supposed to be easier for the musician to read, the A sharp was changed to a B flat, which I do find weird as there are A sharps earlier in the piece. But anyway, had this been written as an A sharp, you could easily say that it was most likely the third of the chord based on the notes before. So having the correct enharmonic written in these cases is actually very important. So what would the solution be? I honestly think the system that we have works if it's taught correctly. Having something like this for the key signature for a piece that's in double harmonic C scale can certainly be confusing and hard to remember when performing the piece. 
But there is also the case that if we change the way key signatures work and open the door for having some different formulas for key signatures, like the one I just showed with two sharps and two flats, those can eventually become commonplace. Not only that, it gets both musicians and composers used to those and can provide the motivation for more unique scales to be used. Unlike the problem with time signature, this one I don't really have a set solution that I'm confident will work. Instead, I know the problem exists and can show examples where the traditional way doesn't completely work. But I would love to know what you think. Should we nix key signatures entirely like some modern composers are doing, or should we change how we approach them and open the door to new possibilities? Maybe you have a solution that I haven't thought of. Let me know.